And you're welcome back. I am being joined by Honorable Adelaja Adeoye. He's the ADP House of Representatives candidate for Oshodi Isolo Federal Constituency. And we will be looking at the challenges of the new generation politicians. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good to be here. Yes, nice to have you too. So we, we are in a country where, you know, young people have been accused of having very low interest in politics and political activities. But here you are, you are vying for office. Uh, would you please, you know, lead us through what motivated you to, you know, get involved in politics and get to the point where you are operating at right now? Well, just like you said, everything, politics generally is a game of interest. So it's something that uh, I have been doing for quite some time, right from when I was in, the, in school. I was actually the student union uh, secretary general at uh, the school. Uh, when I got to uni, like, I got involved so much in politics at uh, my faculty and all of that. So I developed a passion in service, to service, you know, to serve the people. So that's for me into joining a, a political party. And from there, you know, I, so I became the state public secretary of a party in Lagos State. Then at some point in time, around 2019, I became the national public secretary of the same party. Mm. So back to PDP, here I am, you know, vying for a uh, House of Representatives in my constituency in the Shodisola Fera Constituency 2 in Lagos, Nigeria. So what is for me is not about passion, it's about service to the people and about also getting involved, you know, making the desired change that uh, we we need. We all know what's going on in this country, that uh, there are a lot of complaints from the people of the country. And, uh, you know, they keep saying that uh, there are leadership uh, gap and all of that. So some of us that feel that we have one thing or the other to contribute, you know, irrespective of whether we are old, we are young, and all of all. That's why we're getting involved, because we want to really be a change agent. That's why someone like me is into politics. And I have also used that to show an example to fairly young people that it is possible because a lot of them will feel that maybe because they need to have billions, they need to have this, they need to have that. You need to have a starting point. You need to start from somewhere. You need to be relevant. You need to move with people who are also relevant so that at the end of the day, you also can also be relevant. So when you are relevant and when you show example and when you show that you have the capacity to actually contribute to some of the various problems we have in the country. Of course, in one way or the other, you go to the people and tell them that I can do this, I can do that. All this is a game of number, it's a game of appealing to people and telling people that I can do this, I can do that. So once they follow you, then you get in there and you serve them and you go there to represent them. So that's what uh, it's all about. Young people are actually coming uh, to realize that they don't need to sit back anymore. They need to come in. All of the leaders we see today, if you go back to history, you will realize that many of them started politics at their young age. We know a lot of people that became president at their, their mid 30 some at their late 20s, and all what not. They are still at political space now. If they didn't start at that time, they would not be relevant. And they would mostly be here and saying the word they are the leader leading the country. So that is why I challenge young people to come up young people to, 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 to energize and to team up and work together and see how we can begin to push ourselves one by one to you know get into power so that right. we can create change because a change in this country or a policy in this country for us young people without us is actually not for us so that's why we have to get involved deeply and said thank you okay so uh Part of my opening speech was how that young persons have been accused of not being interested. And that is a school of thought because whenever young people and politics, whenever the conversation comes up, of course, different people, different perspectives and different opinions come up. There's this school of thought that says young people are just not interested, so we can't force them. And the other school of thought says we are not being properly represented or included how would you rate inclusion and youth representation in politics in the nigerian space well the truth of the matter is that uh, young people are interested like i posited before they are very very much more interested in politicking and uh, leadership and governance in this country we will see that there are some of our leaders that see the need for young people to be part of government 
here, he understands our challenges. Some of the challenges we have is our ability and resources to compete effectively with these guys that have built themselves over the years. Mm -hmm. So we now see some of them who really see the need to help the young people to come into, gov to, into governance. That's why you see young people. You know, I will give you an example. For instance, now, if you look at all the states in the country, you will see we have a cabinet where we have a, we have position in the cabinet that have a mini a mini a commissioner for youth and sports. You see some of these positions in some other clients, they are putting older people in these positions because they feel it's just a way to compensate some of their people politically. But we still see some genuine leaders that say that this youth, this position is for the young people. Example is Yoyima Kide, he appointed a boy of 26 years old as a commissioner in Oyo State, Nigeria. Mm. And we have some other examples in other states as well. You know, that is deliberate inclusion of young people into, into governance. So, like the people that, the young people, even in Lagos State, for instance, because I'm aware that uh, the Commissioner for Agriculture, she was a young lady, a very young lady too. So, those are the inclusion that are coming into governance. By the time these people, they become commissioner, they did very well. Tomorrow, uh, in, in no distant time, some of them will say they want to run for governor. As before you know it, if they are accepted by the people, they become young, young governors at a young age. People like us also the same thing because we are young people. We are, to, we, are, we, are we are putting effort to make sure that we do something that make people know that young people are really ready. It's just maybe young people are not interested. Young people are interested, but it's just unfortunate that uh, the situation of the country does not really readily readily put the resources that young people need to you know to 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 come into governance and to come into government. So that's, those are the challenges. But I believe that gradually you know. It, the, the challenges will be will be gradually be resolved. I, I want us to dwell a little bit more on the challenges. You, uh, you are a young person running for office. So for the benefit of this conversation, I, I'm going to say that you're a representative of the new generation politicians that are just coming up. Because while you were talking earlier, you mentioned how that you encourage young people to start early, just like you're doing. Because uh, some of our leaders who are still leading us till today actually started off uh, getting office positions when they were in their late 30s, early 30s, late 20s. Uh, uh, and, you know, having people coming up now, young persons coming up now to join politics, we're looking at the challenges now because while you were just speaking, you mentioned resources and you mentioned the situation of the country, which is a general term that we usually use for when we don't want to go into details of what we want to talk about. But you are a young person actively involved in politics. What would you say is the major challenge facing the new generation politicians who are just cropping up? Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. You see, uh, inclusion of young people into politics, of course, as we know, Politics is not, uh, power is not given, mm. it is taken. So it now takes young, some set of young people who have ideas, who are bold enough, and who says that uh, they want to be part of it. Because it's not, you can't force anybody, you can't, you can't say because you are young people, then this, you have to, you have, we have to consider this. Nothing is considered to anybody. You have to work for it and you have to get it. So young people across the country, of course, mm. we go to different states, you, you know, you see young people taking positions at the party. Right. Young people, young people, young people, young people are they, they, they have a variety of challenges. But then, notwithstanding, irrespective of the challenges, there are some young people that they look beyond that those challenges and they still try to run. They still try, no matter how little the resources they have, they go around to galvanize support from those people they know that they could actually, you know, support them to make sure that uh, they also make mark in the political landscape in the country. So we have a whole lot of them. Look at PDP, for instance. We have a very young man from Kaduna State as our national public, uh, sorry, as our national youth leader. The same thing with uh, APC, the national uh, the youth leader of APC. is also a young person, Honorable Dario Israel, you know, from Lagos State. So we are having young people who have that capacity, who have that boldness to say they want to be part. So once we have a few of them, those ones who now, you know, energize other people, who now, uh, you know, ginger other people, that maybe they feel that we can't do it, 
then you know, we have challenge here and then give one excuse or the other. They put all those excuses aside and say, yes, let us even just go in there and see what we can do. So by the time we have one, from one, we have two, before you, we have three, we have ten, we have twenty of young people across the country. Now giving morale to the other young people who are just feeling that uh, because there is one challenge or the other, so they couldn't run, they couldn't be involved and all of that. Then before you know it, we will now be looking beyond the challenges, we will now be thinking outside the box and see how we also, you know, be part of the system. Mm -hmm. So that not just be part of the system, be part of the system and make impact and make good impact that would say that, yeah, this is what they would now see distinction between young people in power, in governance and leadership, and the old people in power and governance and leadership. Because young people, they tend to have more ideas because they are more technological and uh, scientifically inclined. And all of these things have what to do with governance and leadership and uh, government. So these are reasons why I am encouraging more young people to come into 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 politics and look we are look beyond the challenges. I know those challenges they are they, they, they are overwhelming sometimes, but then we can surmount it when we will all work together and support ourselves uh, to, to power. All right. In the past, we've had uh, you know women come out to vie for office. I think it was in the 2015 general elections, we had uh, one female candidate who was vying for the office of the presidency as well. And during the primaries and the build up to 2023, you know, primaries from political parties, we had a couple of women who were also, you know, in the race. Uh, I don't know what has happened now because I've not really heard anything about them or from them. But my question is, uh, before I get to that, even in our National Assembly, there's been like a quota system for women to be represented in the National Assembly and the Senate. What is your take on balancing gender representation in politics, especially when it has to do with young women who are interested in politics? Well, you see, uh, one of the things that uh, a lot of young people uh, the, the need to realize is that, um, you see, politics is not something you could just dab me into and say, because I am a female or I am a young person, then it automatically I have to be included. I, re I, I remember that uh, there was this 33% uh, 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 affirmative action during the uh, Good Luck Jonathan era that um, women and young people should have 35 percent because of this disadvantaged position that they have that they couldn't compete with the big wigs in quotes so that is something that uh, i think uh, the young people and the uh, the women they need to push because we need to start from somewhere i believe uh, 35 percent affirmative action or quota is something that uh, is a good start for us okay so but it's just what uh, people are not uh, thinking about, looking at alternative and see how we could come into government and we come into governance without having to labor so much. I understand that there are some political parties that um, because of the fact that uh, women, young people couldn't uh, be able to compete, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know with, uh, effectively, then they reserve this, they put this as part of their constitution and say that 5% of uh, all the party position go to uh, women and youth. So this are avenue that I am calling on the women and the young people to now begin to armor on and begin to, you know, uh, promote so that that alone could, you know, make uh, those big weeks to support and say, okay, oh, let us uh, uh, do this, uh, let, uh, let us implement this uh, affirmative action. But nobody is talking about that. Like I said before, power is not giving, power is taking. So whatever system legally or you know, logically, that you could use, then let us explore it, which includes what I just said now, the 35% uh, affirmative action. And I remember the former first lady, Dave Patient, to a good Lord Jonathan, was at the forefront of that affirmative action during the reign of a uh, former president, good Lord Jonathan, in between uh, 2011 and 2015. So I believe uh, the wife of the president, uh, or current president, uh, uh, Aja, uh, Aisha Buhari, I believe she also, she's rallying around women across, in fact, I just saw a tweet from her when she was talking about uh, a female making case for female deputy governor in Adama State and things like that. So we need to speak up. It's when we begin to speak up for ourselves 
then we will now begin to see how we can create those platforms and those chance for the young people and the women to come into governance and power. And uh, I understand that uh, women helping women, women collaborating women, these are what we need to do more. So that it won't be that uh, women are fighting women, women are fighting women, women are trying to pull down women. So all of these things, anything that could make women to come together to actually fight for themselves so that they will also be included in government, these are actions I think we should be doing. I'm not talking about the uh, issue of the femi feminism or whatever. If this one has nothing to do with women fighting for women. You understand? This is strictly political. And political, what we do logically, politically, not that you now begin to use the tactics of uh, feminism and uh, 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 propaganda and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some others, you sub to whatever. You understand? Those ones, is not, they are not going to work. You understand? What will work is when you have a formidable action plan, like what I've just mentioned, you understand? You come under that, and uh, I believe it is it is doable. Uh, people, you know, Nigerian citizens, and especially young people, there's a lot of gap between them and the political class. And another way to say that is there's a lot of difference, a lot of distrust, you know, among the young persons and the ruling class. What do you think that the new age politicians who are cropping up, you, vying for office, what can you do differently? Or what do you think can be done differently to curb or bridge this gap and, you know, begin to build trust again among our political class and the citizens? Well, the, the fact of the matter is that um, trust is, um, in quotes, it is uh, subjective, okay? The, the, the constraint itself, the people themselves, they need to tell themselves the truth. And they need to come to terms with what is real and what is imaginative and connect it with their expectation from politicians. Okay? Because when a politician is campaigning and they are telling you what you know that is, it is practically impossible to achieve and you believe them, and when they deceive you, get into power, they get into power, then you are not expecting them to do the impossible mm -hmm. for you. Of course, you know it is a two-way thing. The trust that we are trying to... There are people that you will tell the reality and the truth of what is possible, what is logical, okay, based on reality. But they will not listen to you. They will not follow you. Okay? So that aspect needs to be ironed out. That aspect needs to be, you know, to be, to be resolved by the people themselves. Okay? So that their hope are not dashed. But we, as the young people, the new generation politician and leaders. What we will do differently is when we say it is A, it has to be A. And we have to tell people have an issue what is possible, what is reality in governance, in government, and in leadership, the truth, and all of it. Then it is now left for the people to embrace the truth. So that when we get into power, our own truth we will now make sure that they can hold us on our own truth, mm. on what we have told them that we are going to do. If I tell you that when I become the National Assembly member from Oshodi Solo, Federal Constituency 2 in Lagos, I understand that Lagos State is supposed to have a special status. And I tell you during my campaign, when I get into the National Assembly, I will work so hard along you know, my other colleagues in the House and other the federal constituency across the country to make sure that they support my bill to make that come to reality. And in the process of doing that, I will let my constituency and the state see that this is what I am doing. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? This is the step, step I am taking. I have regular feedback system with my people. Okay? So, at that point in time, they will know that this is what I have told them I am going to the National Assembly to do. Not that I'll get to National Assembly, I'll not be doing something different. Or I'll just go and be doing, uh, if you are for I, say I. If you are for nay, say nay. Without any impact, without any bill that will be that will have far a uh, reaching effect on the people. Like in my own constituency, we know the challenges. And I'm discussing this thing with my people. That we know we have problem of bad roads network in the system. Is it the purview of the National Assembly? No. It is the purview of the state government. What can I do? I will make sure that I have a 
good relationship with the state government that I can use my influence to attract the government to come and fix some of the state road and some of the local government road in my constituency. Then the aspect that con concerns my own purview are the you know enacting laws, legislative agenda. Then I will make sure that these things are judiciously done when I get to the National Assembly without losing focus, without you know a, a rigmarolling around. So these are the things. So that is the truth. My truth and the truth are presented before my people. So they can hold me on my truth. Then they will now know that I am totally different from every other 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 and politician. So that they will know that this young man at the National Assembly, we can emulate him. We can say he's the true representation of the young people in the country, not just only in his constituency. So these are the, these, these are the challenges. So like I said, the people need to know their own truth to expect from the politicians. Okay? So if they know their own truth to expect from the politician, then we can now uh, you know move ahead. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable, uh, for joining the conversation this morning. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas with us. We really appreciate your presence you. on the program this thank morning. You. Thank you so much for thank coming you. through. It is thank still you. the run-up. And after this quick break, when I return, we're going to be going to Ocean State to have that conversation. Do not go anywhere. The run-up will continue after this break. Stay with us. <laughs>